Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Easy Weeknight Cooking with Heart's Desire Spice Blends. Tonight's video is very simple as usual, actually a little bit simpler than most. So what are we going to be doing tonight? A reprise on a beautiful recipe that takes hardly any time at all. This is chicken masala, my darlings. And what are we going to need? We're going to need a very short ingredients list tonight, a pound of chicken cubed, diced, however you like it, uh, about a tablespoon of oil, one 13.5 ounce can of coconut milk. I like the full fat stuff with this. You want the solids plus a little bit of juice in there. That's what we have right here. We're going to need one pound bag of your favorite kind of vegetable mix. And I really love say a snow pea frozen vegetable mix for this and salt and sugar to taste. You're done. So why don't we get cooking and show you how to make this easy peasy recipe right from the comfort of your own kitchen, mostly using what you've got already. So what are you going to do first? Of course, you're going to turn on your pan and throw in about one tablespoon of oil right in the bottom. And we're gonna let that heat up until it shimmers and then we're going to throw in our chicken brown it until it is almost done not quite and then we're going to throw in our coconut milk and our masala get that nice and hot and just oh yummy let those flavors penetrate your chicken and then throw in the vegetables get them heated up you're done how simple can you get really and honestly you can't get much more healthy than meat and vegetables how cool is this? Now, if you guys are just happen to be vegan or vegetarian, you can absolutely substitute lentils or chickpeas or your favorite kind of protein source instead of the chicken. And the taste is fabulous, my darlings. And I really like to do this, honestly, with chickpeas. It works. So this is nice and warm. I've got a nice bit of heat going on there. Gonna throw in my chicken. Go ahead and cover the bottom with the chicken. That way things are going to brown pretty evenly on the bottom. Right there, beautiful stuff. Go ahead and we're going to let that brown on all sides until it is almost done, but not quite. I like to do this because this is such an easy, easy recipe and we want to make sure that chicken gets all the way done. Meanwhile, we don't want to get it all the way, all the way done here because we want some time for that gorgeous coconut milk and those fabulous spices to penetrate that meat and pass those wonderful flavor molecules back and forth. So we're gonna let this brown on high. This does not have to take a whole lot of time. If you are seriously pressed for time, you can go ahead and put your chicken in the microwave and get it mostly done while your coconut milk is heating up with your spices. We've got a good amount of sizzle going on there. I'm going to flip this over because I want this to not stick to the bottom of the pan too much. We do want to develop a little bit of browning, which is why we put in that oil to begin with, because that's going to actually encourage your browning on the bottom. And that browning, what does that create? That creates something called bond. That is the caramelization of proteins on the bottom of your pan. That changes the flavor ever so slightly. <laughs> Oh, in such a beautiful way. This is starting to look fantastic. Still a little pink, so it needs a little bit more cooking here. You've got a lot of juices expressing from this beautiful chicken, and that is going to do some massively wonderful things to the coconut milk. You definitely want somewhat of a meaty flavor in here if you are vegetarian or vegan. Embrace the mushrooms. Absolutely, embrace the mushrooms. Some coconut aminos would also be really good in this, or soy sauce. If you happen to be staying away from gluten at all costs, coconut aminos are your jam, absolutely. Now, for some more of a somewhat nutty taste, instead of using something like olive oil as your, as your base over here, you're going to go ahead and use something like a toasted sesame oil. Add some nuttiness into things and just bring out a lot of those beautiful flavors. 
Okay, now that the chicken is almost done, we have this sauteing over a high heat. We had a little bit of oil in there. Now we're going to throw in our garam masala. Go ahead and just sprinkle that right on over the top. I'm going to stir this in. The heat is going to be really releasing a lot of these flavors here. The garam masala is one of those spices that does fantastic when it's toasted. And we're going to add our 13.5 ounces of coconut milk in there. You have some solids, you have some liquids. Now, when you're using a can of coconut milk, you're going to want to expect that you're going to have the solids on top and the liquids on bottom. So don't let yourself get really surprised by that. The solids will melt as they come up to temperature with your chicken. Stir that in and it's going to look almost like a cream soup there we go beautiful stuff you've got a really beautifully thick texture here that like i said is reminiscent of a cream soup your garam masala is also starting to infuse into your coconut milk and starting to pass those beautiful flavors back and forth between your coconut milk and your chicken and the spices. Now you're going to bring this up to a simmer and you're going to cook that chicken the rest of the way with your coconut milk and your spices in there before you add your one pound bag of vegetables to this. And after the one pound bag of vegetables, if you wish, you can take a taste and see if it needs any salt or sugar and you're done. Serve. How easy can you get? Seriously. I think the uh, longest bit of time is waiting for the pot to boil. Now it is time for your one pound bag of frozen vegetables. These can be thawed. These can be still frozen. It is totally up to you and what your timetable looks like. And isn't that beautifully bright? I love the textures and the colors you can get here. So at this point, we are just waiting for those vegetables to come up to temperature and to get not quite frozen or if you're using fresh vegetables in this you're looking for them to get tender to taste some people like me i like my vegetables still a little crispy and crunchy i love the crunch i love textures now this is looking really good this could easily be a throw together soup if you will or you can do things like serving it over rice if there's a little bit too much broth in there for you. You can throw in a thickener if you like. So at this point, you're going to go ahead and throw in whatever salt and or sugar you prefer after you've given it a quick taste to see if it needs anything and serve. Our vegetables are nice and hot. Oh, I'll tell you, the presentation here is absolutely beautiful. You do not get the really rich golden color you might get from say a normal curry, Indian or Indonesian curry. Instead, this stays kind of a, a this stays kind of like a cream soup color and it's absolutely fabulous. So why don't I go ahead and get out a bowl so we can go ahead and taste this and let you know. Would you look at that? Fantastic. Mm, smells wonderful. Looks divine. And you can't really beat how easy this is. Oh, beautiful. Nutty and citrusy all at once. Oh, that garam masala has done the trick. It's like a curry without being a curry. It's fantastic. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. That nutty citrusy taste of the garam masala really comes through. And then you add something like carrots to it and the sweetness just doesn't quite hit you like a freight train, but it just plain shines. This is a really fabulous dinner for when you're in a hurry. So from our house to yours, that is chicken masala from Heart's Desire Spice Blends. You guys keep things tasty and we will see you next week.